Hi, and welcome to another episode of CRK TV and On The Bench. I'm Clem Kennedy, and in today's episode, we are gonna be taking a look at DJI. Most of our photographic and video customers are probably familiar with our DJI and our imaging portfolio. However, as one of the largest distributors in Australia for DJI, a lot of you may not be aware, we also have a very large service fleet in our geospatial division. So, while we have consumers and professional drones for enthusiasts and filmmakers, we also carry industrial grade drone systems for 3D scanning, terrain mapping, and underground mining solutions. Joining me today in our studio is our very own Bryce Dimich. Bryce is part of our illustrious scanning team and he also facilitates sales in that area. Thank you for joining me today, Bryce. Thanks, Glenn. Thanks for having me here today. So to kick things off, can you tell me a bit more about how drones are implemented in the geospatial segment of the market? Yes, yeah, certainly. So look, in the side of geospatial for uh, survey, we've got the drones that are utilised for volumetric site surveys, aerial imagery updates, as well as utilisation for design and planning, and also a comparison to as-built, so ensuring that you know everything does fit on site. Um, there's also the case that they do use it for safety and incident reporting, so just in case, you know, a truck rollover mm. or whatever it may be that has occurred on a survey site. I see. Um, Bryce, I understand you're a licensed drone pilot yourself. Yep. Um, how does that help your role here at CIK? Well, it's actually really helped quite a lot um, in terms of the legal aspect. We've been able to actually find in areas that may be restricted to certain areas. So, um, for example, we've been able to fly on WestConnex as a project. And with that, there have been a few legalities that we've had to jump hoops to get around for that. But with CASTRA approval, it has allowed me to jump on board and obviously capture that area, which was a fantastic project. Uh, you flew on West Connects, Bryce. Yes, you? correct. Yeah, um, as part of their stockpiles for that. So whilst you're driving down, you'll see a massive hill on the left-hand side from there. Going back to DJI, why do you think they have been so successful in both the consumer and industrial portions of our business? Um, I think they're market leaders of innovation in drone technology. Um, the R&D of the product is forever growing each and every day. Uh, they ha they're not just interested in just one market segment. They like to open their wings and spread across um, every sort of operation that they can get into. And that's been achieved just not just across survey, but they've been able to capture the consumer division of filming, law enforcement, search and rescue, even adapting into agricultural for spraying systems as well. And hopefully into the future, we should see something about goods transports between point A to point B from there. Very interesting, exciting stuff. Personally, what are some of your favourite DJI products? Um, they're all great favourites of mine. Hard to choose, yeah, I know. Certainly is. Um, but the most favourite is the Matrice 300 RTK system, as well as the Phantom series. Um, and then sort of getting dabbling into the consumer market side of things, of uh, utilising the Osmo series. So mobile phone, as well as the Osmo Pocket, which I honestly have to say is a fantastic bit of equipment. That's where it starts to get really fun and creative. Can you tell me the difference between the Matrice and the Inspire? Yeah, certainly. So the difference between the two systems is the Inspire was predominantly created for professional use for filming. Um, it allowed the camera to have a full 360 degree view without interference of the legs. However, with the upgrade in technology and new systems coming out, um, it's now been changed over to being the Matrice 300 or 200 series that is now our top pick. Mm. Uh, we, get, we are getting longer flying times, there's more payload options, so we've been able to adapt new cameras from thermal, LiDAR and photogrammetry or photo cameras. It does have a higher wind rating for missions, so we can get out there in more Supporting. adverse weather. And it's also IP rated, so we can even have it in a little bit of drizzle if there's an option for a search and rescue mission from there. Amazing what you can do with these drones. What do you think sets DJI apart from other brands in the market? Um, I think it's an innovation. They've been a market, a huge market segment um, from the very beginning, uh, if everyone's been following their story, to what we now see as a market leader in technology. Um, but coming back to their aircraft side of things, their flight controller systems have been refined. Um, they're similar to fly between each system, so picking up the Mavic, the DJI Mini 2, and all the way through to the heavy lifting DJI Agris T16 system 
has been able to almost be seamless between the two. Now, here's a question that I bet you get asked a lot, Bryce. How easy would it be for someone to fly a drone or to even pursue a career in the UAV space? Um, yeah, it is definitely a popular question. But look, in terms of it, it is very easy to fly. We've had um, all age groups have an attempt, even all the way up to some of our oldest clients being within well plus of 80s from there. Um, but we, it's very easy with some practice on the smaller system, just working out the fundamentals of the aircraft. And also training with a certified training provider has also been a great way to ensure that you're flying legally within legal reasons as well. Very important and very interesting. Young and old getting involved in drones. What are some of the improvements in drone technologies that you see coming through these days? Um, mostly about longer flying time, so we're ensuring that the safety of the aircraft can naturally withhold the longer flying time. Uh, it does. It is GPS enabled, so it allows for any user whilst it's out in the field not having to worry about throttling up or throttling down of the aircraft. It can hold its position. Uh, improvements in the flight controllers, uh, but it's also the identical system um, integration between all of them. So being able to fly the Mini all the way through to the T-16 has actually been a great achievement and they all feel exactly the same. Interesting, so you can easily progress your way up the range. Yeah, exactly. They all do have the same feel, same interface, um, so there's no confusion or misguidance with those systems. What type of drone system, DJI drone system, would you recommend for someone starting out? Uh, it's been on application of use, really, um, for, for each individual user. We also do have the option, like, for survey. Um, we found that the Phantom Series has been a very successful unit. Uh, it is robust. Um, we've seen that it has had about three to four years in the market, and we've seen nothing but success out of that system from there. But it's also for quick data acquisition from field to office. So by the time you've captured that area in the field, you can come back into the office and ensure that you've got the correct data every time. But in saying that, it's not just utilised for survey. They can also utilise it for hobbyist um, acquisition of photography and videography. So even doing market segments um, for their own business. Fantastic. Can you tell me more about the innovation of DJI, particularly on the L1 and P1? Yeah, most certainly. Um, it's an exciting new product that we actually have here today to introduce to the market segment. So we've got our M300 with our LiDAR system attached onto the bottom, as well as our controller system from there, which we will be utilising to be capturing from that. So with the LiDAR system, um, it is actually a really nice product that has been put together by DJI, utilising their own in-house LiDAR system as well. It does have a detection range of up to 450 metres with an 80% reflectivity. It's also a one-stop post-processing um, system from there, which is even better from taking data off the system and then throwing it into other third-party softwares from there. In saying that as well, it is highly efficient. We are able to capture up to a two square kilometre area in a single flight with accuracies in the vertical of five centimetres and the horizontal of 10 centimetres. And that's not introducing ground control as a first point of call. It is also IP rated. And we also have the ability to see a live feed coming back to our screen whilst we're capturing the data to ensure that we've captured the correct areas or areas that we may have missed as well with that. Uh, and also we do have a P1 camera coming out as well, which is even more exciting considering we haven't had a photogrammetry camera out in the market for over two years now since the Phantom 4 RTK system was released. Uh, it is a 45 megapixel full frame sensor and it does have the ability to do three single shots within a second from there so we can capture those oblique images uh, within a, a blink of an eye. Um, Fantastic. And Allowing for the heavier payloads with this M300 system, we can actually fly a lot longer. So we're looking at roughly about 40 to 50 minutes in total flying time, uh, which obviously saves a lot of downtime of bringing the aircraft back, changing batteries, and then sending it back off from there. Unbelievable. Is there anything this can't do, Bryce? Uh, at the moment, it cannot deliver food to us, unfortunately, <laughs> but I'm sure into the future we'll see something similar of that coming forward. We're all hanging out for that. Bryce, thank you so much for your time here today. For more information on all our DJI products, check out our website and all authorised resellers. Also, for the latest and greatest in tech from us, don't forget to like, share and subscribe on all our social platforms. I'm Clem Kennedy signing off and thanks for watching.